Good afternoon again. Again, thanks to APO for this very good opportunity for us to talk to you directly from Sierra Leone. You have been listening to the results of our daily tests on Ebola and the cases according to the results that the world gets from the WHO and the other UN agencies that are in country. We see that you're worried that situations are not improving in Sierra Leone. Well, this afternoon, I've come to tell you much better than what the news tells you on the wires. Yes, indeed. This morning and yesterday, I listened to reports from the international news, the Voice of America, I listened to the BBC, and the news is that the cases are increasing in Sierra Leone at 100 new cases a day. Well, I must tell you that we have computed the average over the last 10 days. It's not up to 50 new cases. If I give you examples, on the 4th of December, there were recorded 69 cases countrywide, confirmed by laboratory tests. On the 5th of December, there were 37 cases confirmed by laboratory tests. On 6th of December, 54. On the 7th December, 25. On the 8th December, 58. 9th December, 45. And 10th December, 37. So the last seven days you can see that if you average out those numbers, there are just about 40 new cases on average per day. And they are falling. They are falling because we see the practical manifestation of that on the ground. The uh, most telling story of rising Ebola cases is when the demand for hospital beds surpasses the number in our own Boko district where the British are opening a new treatment center tomorrow of 100 beds. The available bed capacity there is about 358 at the moment, comprising of one holding center of 40 beds and the rest, uh, sorry, a treatment center of 40 beds and the rest are holding centers. But we now have a situation where some of these holding centers are empty. The beds are empty and that is good news. In an Ebola infested area, if the beds start looking empty, then it means that the cases on the ground are going down. Because before it was the patients that are chasing the beds. For now, the beds seem to be sitting there waiting for patients that are not coming. And it is not because the people are hiding, they're not anymore. Because the traditional rulers, the local political leaders, and the headmen of villages, they go house to house in search of sick people. And all they can bring out is what is in the holding centers at the moment. In a center which I also pioneered the construction of at Loko Masama in the Port Loko district, we have a 67 bed capacity. We only have 17 patients there. In Lunge, near the airport, a place called Sumbuya, we have a 33 bed capacity. Number of patients, 8. And so on and so forth. This is like so. So the huge numbers that seem to be coming out on the wires don't seem to be reflecting on the ground. Now part of the explanation for that is that these huge numbers are swelled up by tests carried out on people who are already dead, i.e. the swaps. Because we have a policy in Sierra Leone 
that any death now is treated as an Ebola death until proven otherwise, which means that the burial will take place immediately as a medical burial. So when people are buried and then the results come out later, they swell the numbers. That is why we have more confirmed cases on paper than are actually on ground. So as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know, the cases are going down and with Ebola, the success is when you tend to zero. And that is what we are aiming at. Come end of de December, as has been pronounced by the President, we should see very, very few cases all over. In fact, there are now districts that are registering zero cases. Kailahu and Kenemai, the first epicenters you're already aware. But uh, 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 Bont, Bo, Pujahu, and Moyamba are registering zeros now. And so it's going to do go. So it means the new cases, the transmission has been more or less reduced. And that is what we are hoping to get to. So for now, I think that will be the end of my introductory remarks. I will wait to answer your questions. Thank you very much. IRIN, how does the government plan to do to curb the rising Ebola cases in the western area and other pockets? What strategies are you going to implement? Well, like I said, maybe the news is more sensational than what's happening on the ground. I'm talking to you now from the western area. The cases that report are very high. But I do know that the government has put in some new treatment centers in order to address that situation. We have the Kerry Town, which the British were running through Save the Children, which has now started admitting all manners of persons into it. But up till now, I think they only have about 20 to 25 patients in an 80 bed capacity. So I believe that if there were really sick people around, they would have been presented to that. But the police training school, which is our flagship uh, treatment center run by the doctors from the military and the police, has 200 bed capacity. And a new extension of another 200 beds has just been put. Then the British contingent also built on the airfield at Hastings another 80 bed capacity. So there is about 480 capacity beds now in that area. And then you go down to the west end of Freetown, a place called Laka, which used to be the isolation center for tuberculosis patients. It's now been turned into a treatment center by the emergency hospital run by the Italians. They've just opened on last Saturday a 100 bed treatment facility, which includes a 20-bed uh, intensive care unit with dialysis machines and lots of life support machines, so that the facilities that would have been needed or provided if people were seriously sick and taken overseas will now be, able, will now be available locally. So that's what the government is doing. And the other thing we need to do, once all of these are in place, to ensure that people are still not hiding in the places, I think the President is considering another lockdown of the country, particularly the western area, because some areas in the country are already locking down. Tonkolili did lock down, and then Kono locked down, Kono district locked down, and in Port Loko we are planning to lock down on the 14th. So when that is done, I think Freetown will be the only place that would be open as an epicenter. So President Koroma might consider uh, locking down so that we can bring out the sick and take them to the holding centers. We now have places to take them to. That is the strategy. And of course today he also held a meeting with most of the traditional uh, uh, societies we call the... the, the, the 
the social societies, the uh, secret societies, who have tendencies of uh, cultural uh, handling of uh, dead bodies and uh, uh, sick people. He had a meeting with all of the representatives of those societies today and told them that the control of Ebola and the breaking of the chain of transmission is squarely in their hands. So they should desist from the established practices, the traditional practices to cut down on the chain of transmission. I believe when once we reduce the amount of contact through all of this and having enough of the treatment centers, now we have safe burials in the western area, almost safe burials everywhere, we will be able to resolve this matter. AP, Associated Press. Can you please talk about Kono? The WHO statement from last night made it seem like the outbreak there took officials by surprise. How did Kono become such an intense hotspot? Well, I don't think the adjective intense is justified. I think it is the reporting of eight new cases that uh, prompted the, the descendants from that area to feel that eight new cases are eight too many. So they decided to shut down Kono. But the total infected in Kono for now, I think it's even still less than a hundred. So it is not a new outbreak with uh, surprising proportions. And I believe that the WHO report came out because Kono had been registering numbers in the low, uh, 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 low single figures of two, three, four, and even less than five. So for a single ca day, for a ca eight cases to manifest, that is room for an alert. It is an alert. And that alert has been addressed by both the DHMT, that is the District Health Management Team there, and the Association of Descendants from that area, and of course the Ministry of Health and Sanitation, to put measures in place, including locking down the whole district, to ensure that they can bring people out, sensitize others, and make sure that there is no transfer cases from other districts. That is what is happening in Kono at the moment. It is not a very serious outbreak at the moment. What is the situation in Kono? This is from Bloomberg News. The WHO reports that there are bodies piling on top of each other at the Holy Hospital in the area. That is news to us here in Sierra Leone. News to us here in Freetown. I don't believe this is the case. But the IFRC facility that has been built there will soon be ready and it will be open for operations. But I think I addressed the issue in Kono already in the last question. Thank you. How can you, Associated Press, how can you possibly get to zero cases by the end of the year, given the explosion of cases in Kono and in the capital? Associated Press, I think the last two questions I dealt with already. Eight cases have been the highest number that has been reported in one single day in Kono. And that is what has caused the alarm and the alert. So it is not an explosion. They are a containable situation. And the DHMT is already there and on top of the situation. And we are sending teams there to ensure 
that during the lockdown, people who are sick would be brought out. Yes, we still agree that we will tend to zero by the end of the year. The Associated Press, junior doctors who are striking have been demanding a treatment center dedicated to treating healthcare workers. But one such center already exists at Kerry Town. Why does this not satisfy their demands? A very good question. Kerry Town was a center, was the first center that was uh, started in the western area. And when the British came, it was handed over to them because we were expecting they would put in a good management clinical team there. It is ready now, but we understand that the MOU that was signed eventually between the ministry and the British contingent is that it was going to be reserved for people who are working within British-run uh, centers, medics working within British-run centers. That caused a little bit of a row here in Sierra Leone. So that situation has now been corrected. It has now been re reviewed. Kerry Town is now made personnel, be they local, be they uh, British, foreign, or be they people who uh, uh, work in any other treatment centre. It is now open. But what is good also is that the the treatment center at Lacar has been opened by the Italians under the emergency hospital. It's a center that has got 100 beds, 20 of which are in what is called an ICU, an intensive care unit, with the uh, appropriate machinery in there, including a kidney dialysis uh, 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 machine, which the doctors had been demanding. So that request of theirs, that demand of theirs, has been met already. Voice of America. What are the reasons for the drop in cases in Kenema and the other districts that are reporting substantial drops in cases? And what will, take, what will it take for that success to be replicated elsewhere in the country where the disease is still spreading. I like this question. This question tends to bring out the best of uh, our current practices. The last time also when we spoke, Voice of America, you said you wanted to tell the good story. You wanted to talk to me about survivors. And that is good. Up to date we have over 1,283 survivors, which is a first in Ebola outbreaks. But the reason for Kailangu and Kono and Kenema showing zero cases for now is that it is time dependent. They were the first to have been hit by the virus. So all efforts were focused there. Treatment centers were built on time and isolations were carried out on time and even quarantine in the districts started there. They've been in quarantine for over two and a half months now. So that has shown us that quarantining, having treatment centers and holding centers, and mobilization of the population does help. So those are the reasons I are showing cases. I show in zero cases. And this has been uh, replicated in all other districts now. We are making sure that we have enough holding centers. We're making sure that we have enough treatment centers, which means more beds. And then we are also quarantining homes where people have been infected for 21 days and monitoring the inmates of those homes where, who can be removed at any time. We now have enough ambulances to move people. We now have enough uh, holding centers and treatment centers. So we believe that it is a matter of time for the other districts to show a replica of what is happening in Kenema and Kailahun. Because Kenema and Kailahun were the first district, so it's a temporal issue.
the Associated Press. Can you talk about the role secret societies have played in Ebola transmission? Well, because they are secret, I don't have all of the information. But it is an assumption. It is conjecture that secret societies have certain traditions and cultural practices that they carry out among themselves as members. And this will invariably involve touching and contact. And since this disease is anti-touching, it means that secret societies' practices can enhance the spread of Ebola. That is why President Kuruma himself today held a meeting with most leaders of secret societies and traditional cultural societies to talk to them uh, to desist from most of their cultural practices, if not all, at least for the period of this Ebola outbreak, so that we can contain the outbreak. If we can eliminate that as an aspect through which Ebola is transmitted, then we will concentrate on the attitudinal and behavioral uh, aspects of our people. So that is what we are doing at the moment. Secret societies may have contributed inadvertently into the spread of Ebola through their tra traditional practices. Bloomberg News, what are you concerned about the impact of Ebola on the diamond mining sector? Have you quantified the impact? Well, I believe that would have been a question for the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources and the National Minerals Agency. But the effect of Ebola will definitely be adverse to the mining sector particularly now that the main diamond producing area of Kono is under quarantine. I believe it will also affect our GDP because the total mining sector productivity accounts for about 23% of our GDP. And now we know that the London mining has been affected because of Ebola. It has had to go into administration, but it has been rescued by the Timis Corporation, which bought the assets of London mining here. And seamlessly, the operations of London Mining have continued now on that Timis Corporation without uh, laying off any workers. It has also affected the iron ore industry because the Tenkolili Iron Ore Project, a, a, a mine under the African Minerals Limited, has also been affected. And they have not been able to continue operations because their shares have been suspended in the AIM market in London. So they have suspended operations here for two months. But before doing that, they paid everybody for two months until the end of December. And we believe that by the end of those two months, they would have restructured themselves. So for the diamond industry specifically, the quarantining will affect it because it is a, an individual effort. Apart from the one industrial mining company under Octia, which used to be Koido Holdings, every other mining activity has been artisanal or semi-industrial. And because it is a people-oriented business, and when the people are prevented from going out into the fields, unlike London Mining, which is an automated mining operation of iron ore, it will be affected a lot more. So I believe there will be a drop in diamond production. But all be it temporary. Temporarily. We are hoping come December, end of December, we should be seeing cases tending to zero. And when they tend to zero, we have a period of cool enough before the president will lift the emergency and everybody will go back to the field, into mining, as well as into agriculture and other activities. That is a hope, a hope that is supported by the number, by the figures that are coming out now. Those figures are reducing daily. Well, 
the Associated Press. This is a very pointed question. On the secret societies, can you please name the practices you are referring to? What have they been asked to stop doing? Well, by nature of the name itself, there are secret societies, and I'm not a member of any of them. So I don't really know what they do in there. But for those who know, they believe that there are certain tactile, tactile practices, i.e. body contact, uh, also handling of the dead and all that, which are still being carried out. And His Excellency the President today appealed to communities to effect change in cultural practices that may have accounted for the drop in cases. And I think that is helping us. So the people are actually listening to His Excellency the President. But he uh, crowned that today by having a general meeting with all of the members representing uh, 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 the secret societies and cultural societies uh, in a meeting where he continued the appeal. But I cannot say exactly what these are because I am not a member of any of the secret societies and as such I cannot talk about it. I don't know exactly what it is. Itar Tas in Russia. Can it predict when the epidemic will start scaling down? Yes, I can. I think I said that already. I believe we've turned the curve. I read the figures earlier. The daily figures as of 4th December, 69, 37, 54, 25, 58, 45, 37. An average of about 40s and thereabouts. So it's less than what they are saying, what the, the news media is saying that is about 100 cases a day. Less than that by 60%. So it's scaling down. And today also I expect the figures to even go below 37. But the results are released in the evening. I should be able to give you more information on the internet or through the, uh, the, the Skype interviews that I'll be holding later on. But I believe that the time is now. It is scaling down. And we will tend to zero towards the end of the month. The Associated Press. Your question has disappeared. Could you put it up again, please? The Associated Press. Can you give us figures on the number of beds you think you still need in the country, particularly in the capital area? How many are open now? How many are planned to open? And how many are you still looking? for partners for. I can only repeat what His Excellency the President said. We need about 2,500 beds countrywide and in the capital I think we need about 1,000 beds. At the moment we have a total of two, four, five, about 600 beds available now. I think we need about 400 more. So these beds we need partners for and if they can come, fine. But we hope that with the, 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 the conclusion, the completion of the uh, British treatment centers in Port Loco, in uh, Makeni, and also in Moyamba this weekend, we will have a new increase of about 300 beds countrywide. But MSF also has constructed a 100-bed treatment center at the playing field in the Prince of Wales School in Freetown. So the bed capacity are increasing on a daily basis. But we do need more. You can never have enough because the outbreak itself is unpredictable in its behavior. But for now, although we are breathing a sigh of relief, we are not complacent. We are putting up what you call a permanent preparedness plan so that it should there be any outbreak anywhere, we have both the rooms, the beds, the personnel, and the equipment to handle that.
the patriotic vanguard. Port Loco District used to be an Ebola epicenter, but is now doing well. What have the people of Port Loco done that could be copied by other districts seriously affected by Ebola? Yes, Port Loco District until very recently was the second highest uh, prevalent area. But because we in Port Loco have put up many holding centers and we put up some treatment centers and we have engaged our paramount chiefs and the traditional rulers to engage the people at community level about the needs of identifying sick people and calling on the 117 or calling on the paramount chief to remove them to holding centers the case of increases in that district have gone down personally I've been involved in the construction of nearly 400 beds extra into the district which are off-grid off-grid in the sense that they were not the normal system construction uh, uh, beds but we were able through community intervention through local efforts we were able to put about 400 beds to be precise 358 beds there and a lot of those beds at the moment are awaiting patients because like I said although the news is very alarming about the number of new cases in all of these districts the reality on the ground is that there are not many patients to fill those beds which means that the numbers that are coming from the centers that give the statistics on a daily basis are numbers that are uh, that include cases of dead people we'll call them swabs here samples that are taken after somebody has died and when we look at it in fact I think I have some of these results here it shows that it shows that the the, 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 the cases that of death are higher for non Ebola related cases than they are for Ebola cases but it shows that uh, uh, good. I can show you this I can show you this I hope you can see this or oh. this is a sample of results that came out for Potloco as you can see if you can see the yellow there indicates positives and the rest the white is non positive so you see that the cases here show that the dead people, so the list of dead people, 49 people who were dead, 49 of them, and only that number were positive with Ebola. The rest were not positive Ebola identified cases. And of the 38 that were tested that day for protocol, 16 of them were swabs, dead people, and the 23 were an aggregation over four days so which means it's about six to seven per day so the holding centers have helped the sensitization have helped the president's visits to the areas to talk to the paramount chiefs have helped immensely because he even told the chiefs that it was their responsibility that in any chiefdom where the uh, prevalence increased he as president would only have the paramount chief to hold responsible and they have taken this seriously so they are out there on a daily basis visiting the chiefdoms visiting the villages talking to their headmen and all that and bringing out the people on a daily basis so it's helping that is the secret for Port Loco and I think it's a secret that the rest of the country is putting in place and I believe that is why we are confident come December uh, 30th, 31st, we will be tending to zero. I'm not saying it will be zero, we will tend to zero. I will be in the low single numbers of cases.
I I I N Irina. With the figures coming down, are you planning to adjust response accordingly, or the measures stay the same regardless? Yes, with Ebola. Yes, okay. Uh, with Ebola, you don't scale down. You must carry on until it is zero and zero for a very long time, at least for a minimum of 42 days. So that will be a permanent prepared plan. But we just heard that in this uh, 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 preparedness plan, in this continuation of the measures that are in place, the king of uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, who is the custodian of the two holy mosques, has just announced a whopping sum of $35 million grant for Sierra Leone, Guinea and Liberia to fight Ebola. So we see that the support is coming, and it's coming in a big way. With this global effort, I believe that as a human race, we will defeat the Ebola virus, which for me is an alien. It's coming to interfere with our normal, with our normal, uh, with our normal way of life on earth. And I believe that the world should come together to eradicate this Ebola. And truly will be able to celebrate as a world true independence as in the sci-fi movie. How do you, Ebola Daily News Summary, how do you explain the fact that so many children have survived Ebola while their parents died? Well, Ebola, the fight against Ebola is a problem of constitution, internal constitution. It is the internal immune system. And I believe younger people have stronger immune systems than older people. Maybe that is why the young survive more than the older people. Because they are much stronger, their constitution is stronger, and their DNAs are still very much uh, robust. I think it's a medical, it's a medical problem. The patriotic vanguard. Many people in the diaspora are worried over the fact that there is a treatment center at the Prince of Wales School, one of the leading schools in the country. What can you say to calm their fears? Well, I think they should worry more that there is an epidemic in Sierra Leone that is threatening the very fabric of the existence of the people of Sierra Leone. There is an epidemic that's about to annihilate the whole nation and West Africa. So what is a school? It can be rebuilt. But the important thing is that it is not in the school. It is in the playing field, and it is being run by MSF, who are well known for their clinical practices, and will be able to return those grounds into what you call good for purpose at the end of the day. They will disinfect it, if at all. But the way we see the Ebola cases falling, maybe the Prince of Wales Treatment Center might not even be used. As I tell you, the police training school have extended their bed capacity from 200 to 400. And the 200, initial 200, are still not full. The British have built another treatment center next door at the, play, the, the airfield, Hastings Airfield. 
80 beds, still empty. The Laka Emergency Hospital has another 100 beds, still empty. So maybe, maybe, Prince of Wales, if we have to use it, it will be a last resort. But if we have to use it, it is because it is necessary to save the lives of the people. So the sentiment about school cannot outweigh the necessity for us to continue the existence of the people of Sierra Leone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we hope to meet you again next week. Thank you very much. So the online press conference has been recorded and will be available on YouTube within one hour. The link will be sent to you all via email. Thank you all from the APO.